Hello, friends, and welcome to the Optimized Advisor Podcast, where we focus on optimizing the well-being and best practices of insurance and financial professionals today. On this show, our objective is to help you optimize your life, optimize your profession, and learn from other optimized advisors. I'm your host, Scott Heinela. We hope you enjoy the show. On today's show, I had the pleasure of sitting down with Paige McDaniel and her partner, Carrie Gilmore, founders of the McDaniel Gilmore Group. The McDaniel Gilmore Group is a luxury property realtor specializing in Ladera Ranch, Talega, and coastal Orange County. We dove into everything real estate in this current marketplace now and into the future. We hope you enjoy. Hello, hello, ladies. You know, I, you, in all seriousness, you are professionals, and that's, we are going to have a professional conversation today. However, I do feel as though I'm in front of two teenagers <laughs> <laughs> and have them just Sometimes. ready to have a hell of a time. Sometimes. Yes. yes. Yeah. I think we know how to do that. We're we know hard how to play hard. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Our motto. Thank you for coming in, in all seriousness, today to talk about your business, the real estate market, real estate as a practice. And uh, we can dive deep into a couple different areas. Yeah, is great. it is a crazy time? Is it not? Oh no, it gosh. is. Who would have ever guessed COVID would have led us to this time? It is insane. It's, it's unprecedented in so many ways. Right. We keep hiring people just to help us with the load that we're taking on. And we're just two moms trying to build our business and stay grounded. And it's really, really crazy right now. How many text messages do you have right now that you haven't gotten to yet? I'm today? 60. I'm yeah. worried. I was just going to say 50. In fact, when I saw Melissa at yoga this morning, I said, I just don't want to leave this room. I was laying there on my mat because I said, I know once I leave, I'm going to have 50 text messages waiting for me. That's unbelievable. So if you are. I'm Carrie Gilmore. And you are. Paige McDaniel. Okay. And you're part of. The McDaniel, McDaniel Gilmore, Gilmore Group. Bingo. That was well done. <laughs> Good. In <laughs> we finish each other's sentences. <laughs> All right. So I don't want to get ahead of ourselves. Let's first talk about how two of you found each other and what your practice looks like from the beginning. Okay. Quick, so who wants to go in first? I'll go in first. Um, how did you meet? Well, I was working in um, corporate America and working for Sony PlayStation in their sports department. Um, so... Um, uh, PlayStation, yeah. and I was working a long load and um, met, met Paige doing nonprofit work for um, Children's Hospital of Orange County. And yeah, I was new uh, to the area, actually. I had just finished up my coaching career at USC, and I swam there as well, but got called back to come and be an assistant coach. So I was coaching the men's and women's swim team. And I had moved back to Orange County to start my real estate career, which is something that I had always wanted to go into. And Carrie and I, um, I was working in Ladera Ranch, and I believe Carrie had just moved there. And we both joined the Tinkerbell Guild, which was um, an affiliation What the of heck Chalk is the Tinkerbell Guild? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it's South it's Orange County's chapter for Chalk Hospital, Children's Hospital of Orange County, to raise funds for Children's Hospital of Orange County right, right here off Mission in South County. Mm -hmm. As I'm learning, as they say in the South, bless your heart. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we met through that group of women, and it was so much fun. We used to do throw the biggest galas and auctions, live auctions, and, and raise money. And we met one day and realized that both of our husbands were firemen. We had a lot in common. We were hardworking. And... Um, I think Paige was super pregnant at the time. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I said, what are you going to do when you, um, for maternity leave? Because I had had my real estate license and I didn't know if it was something I wanted to dabble in, but I had read some books that always said you should have it. Um, but I was just kind of getting sick. I had a four month old at home and I just really didn't want to work the grind um, of, you know, being away from him and traveling and that kind of thing. So Paige said, I'm going to do nothing. I'm not going on a maternity leave. And I kind of started laughing because I had a four month old at home. And I think once she had her baby, she <laughs> called me and said, okay, I, I want to take you up on this. And yeah. that's kind of how we And found. that was what, 18 months ago? No, <laughs> that was in 2009. Yeah. Was it really? Yeah. yeah. Wow. 2009, I had my baby, my first baby girl. And yeah, my career was off and running and I was doing so well at the time. I just didn't think that I had to take time off or I didn't think I needed it. But I also 
didn't know what it was like to be a new mom. So Carrie jumped on board and instantly we And that was in became, 09. Yeah. So yeah. you formed your practice yeah. in Together. 09. Yeah. yeah. The McDaniel That's a Gilmore shitty group. Time. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, it was, so it was coming up. She goes, why are you quitting? Um, do not quit your six-figure income. Why yeah. do you want to do this? And I actually made my husband sign a contract saying, I'm going to try this. Let's just give it a go. And thank God my husband was super supportive. And yeah. um, I learned the business when we were doing short sales and REOs, and it took nine months to close a property. But in hindsight, it was a really great time to learn the business. Absolutely. So Paige uh, was just coming yeah, How did you high. get your – so you – in 09, things were not <clears throat> like they are right now. Right. How do you get a first listing? Is it just all like our well, sales is always like write a list of 100 people you know and reach out to your natural network and try and get them? I kind I of have a funny story about my first. but Well, I mean, you do, but I, I had started my career in 2006. Okay. That's when my start. So it was... <laughs> We were going into a major recession, right. and it was slow rolling. My dad was so mad at me. I had my master's degree. He asked me why I wanted to be a used car salesman. I believed in myself, and I went after my goal of you know continuing to pursue pursue your real estate yeah. and pursue my dream. What I wanted to do, I just I have a love for this industry, and I always knew if I'm ethical and hardworking, they will come. <laughs> and she worked <laughs> for Ladera Ranch come. Realty, yeah. which was the very first real estate um, agency in, and that really impressed me because she was working with all of the builders and she sold all the land lots. When I first came in, we were selling custom homes and land lots. And really it was kind of a ghost town up there. You know, there were oh. people that saw a vision that were building in Shady Canyon and different areas, but for the most part, you know, it was like one house and then four vacant lots. Right. Right. And then we started doing a lot of, you know, short sales and REOs. But but my business did start in the custom home sites and custom homes that were built on spec. So it was fun working for the builders. And Carrie jumped right in with me in 2009. And, you know, by then we I had kind of had a base under me, but it was still hard. I right. mean, 10 was the bottom, 10, 11 and 12. We started to creep back up, and then 2013, I think we kind of made our way full circle, and thank God, you know, equity started coming back. Yeah. So it was a four-year grind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty much. To where you'd hit your stride. Yeah, and our firemen husbands were looking at us like, what are you doing? <laughs> You're spending a lot of time away from home and making no paychecks. No paychecks we were are making, coming in. We were they making were a small. lot of friends. Yes, <laughs> That's amazing. No, we were doing well, and people knew who we were, yeah. and that's when our brand started. It's and true. we have built up to become Paige and Carrie, or Carrie and Was Paige. there a moment where you were recognized, the two of you internally recognized, okay, we've, we're now established. We, you know, we, we are not in this survival mode any longer. We are a brand within this community. Was there something that occurred where the two of you looked at each other and were like, we've, this is it? COVID. <laughs> I mean, I think really? we, we looked at each other a lot of times in those so 19, early days. In 19. I mean, in a lot, no, in a lot of days. I mean, we were doing good and our, every year our business was getting better and better and better. Yes. Yes. But I think um, we had little kids. I mean, so we have, I mean, we were talking at two and three in the morning when we were up like feeding our kids. We yeah. were on oh. conference calls with people giving them lollipops to make them be quiet. I mean, we were, Oh, that was our <laughs> husbands were gone. They were firemen. So we right. were managing business and being moms at the same time. So that's kind of what made it unique too. We had some time in those early days because we were also, I think that's our why right. our partnership has succeeded. People have always asked us, what's your secret? And I think it's because we had the exact same lifestyle. Like we knew our husbands were working on the weekends, so it was okay for us to work on the weekends. Yeah. Um, we knew that we would have to get sitters here and there, but when the guys were home, they were hands-on with the kids and we would go to work. It was, you know, we would put our kids to bed and we'd start working at 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. It was a grind. It was. And but we, we loved it. We loved it. We have a lot of funny stories, but it was a grind. And, and Carrie, I remember that time when we had clients who had called and I had a 
probably a three-week-old, and they wanted us on a conference call at 7 p.m., which is bedtime for our other toddlers. Absolutely. And we just gave them a bag of lollipops and told them to be quiet (laughs) and tried our best to get through as professionally as we could. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we wear a ton of hats. But our biggest hats are our mom hats and our real estate hats. Mm -hmm. See, that's a perfect example of how I think real estate agents are better off being female. Because I I would quit. I would have not (laughs) done it. I would have succeeded. I would have failed. So that's kudos to you for sure. And I think they're in all seriousness, like the advantages that, I mean, it's a demanding profession in terms of your schedule is completely irregular Mm -hmm. you're in evenings you're on weekends Mm -hmm. Uh, how do you we're missing games uh, we're missing recitals we're missing dinners with our kids we're missing bedtimes yeah but then you do have these kind of abnormal gaps in your schedule during the week well no No? not now but usually we do but Mm -hmm. not right now maybe seasonal but seasonal we really don't have gaps. We're constantly on. And, and real estate, I think what people need to know is that it's it's a service industry. Yeah. So when our clients say jump, we say how high. And I think that's also why we've been successful, that we have been able to cater to our clients and our friends and and come up with solutions on how to make it more of a smooth transition, not only in our lives, but in our business as well. Yeah. That's and I think with two of us, too, um, we're able to cover each other. So we feel like we can work hard, play hard. We can work and put in the hours, but also go on vacation and check out where the other one's covering our business. So that's a huge advantage. Mm-hmm. I don't know that I would do this business if it wasn't for Paige, honestly. I don't think so. We have um, moms and friends of ours looking at us every day if we walk on the campus, you know, to pick our kids up. We do drop off. We do pick up. We do it all. <laughs> But they see us, and I don't think that they realize that how hard we're working. Mm-hmm. You know, we put on a front, and we're friends with everybody, but we are constant. So um, it is – it's – More demanding, I think, than people realize. I think For so. sure. So but as we, we sit it. here today, so we're <clears throat> – what's the date? May 6th? Yeah, May 6th. Four months. How many active listings do we currently have? How many – closings have we succeeded in this year us being one this is good timing i know cheers to you all for Thank helping you. cheers thanks for oh yeah trusting us absolutely two. It was when, fun working with you yeah, yeah cheers to that. two days ago two days congratulations ago. <laughs> it's um nerve-wracking but also a, a relief for any homeowner yeah. i yeah. think yeah for sure yeah we closed your house two days ago we closed the house yesterday i think we have an eight in escrow right now we have about 10 buyers we're working with, and we have about half a dozen new listings coming up. Wow. <laughs> and we just hired, um, well, we have Sherry McDaniel, which she's um, kind of one of our office managers. She's an associate. Um, she does a lot of work in Laguna Beach and Girl Laguna business. Niguel. And then we just brought on Celia Fishback, which we're so excited about. She's amazing, and she's been in the business nine years. So she's come in with a full um, experience, and she wants to uh, to support us. And then we also have a, um, a stager and then I have a marketing background. So I like to do a lot of our marketing. And we have a, um, another behind the scenes transaction coordinator, Jill Angevin, who is our backbone and been with us for the last 13 years. We couldn't do it without her. I don't know how I, like she really, we could not do it without Mm -hmm. her either. So if I'm, I mean, we went through this process, so I kind of know. <laughs> it's fairly new, fresh, <laughs> fresh in your head. <laughs> but but for our audience and listeners, if they're looking to, I mean, what is the journey today for if I'm looking to put my house up on the market? And you hear all these, cra- I mean, I just from one of our advisors yesterday, he sent me this vi- video of people lining up down the street to buy houses. And, I, you know, that can't obviously be everywhere in every market or every price point. So there's got to be specific either geographic locations or specific price points that are just so compounded by demand and lack of supply. What do I, how do I prepare myself to put a house on the market? And what should I really get my mind prepared to manage? Well, oh, 
you want to take this? I was just going to say, uh, yeah. if you're a seller, it's a great time. If you're a buyer, it's a lot more challenging. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, the things that you can do as a seller to get your house ready is one thing that's very unique about the McDaniel Gilmore Group is that we have our own staging. So we can come in and stage your house, and we do that complimentary. Um, And I think the only way to get people in before we had open houses, broker previews, right now it's just pictures. So if you're getting swiped by, you're gone. You're, you know, lost in five minutes. So we need to have a great photographer. For instance, like your home, so beautiful, so gorgeous. Yeah. But we, Carrie and I, we have a brand that we like to uphold and we stage for the camera, the eye of the camera. So I think what Carrie was just trying to say was even if your home is beautiful, We'll still come in with our designer. We might reorganize a few things to optimize, you know, the space and the visual of the room. And we'll look through our own cameras before we actually have our photographer come in and make sure that it is just right. Because like Carrie just said, you can swipe right or swipe left and that house is gone. So we want people to remain on, on your listing, on your page. And it's all virtual now. So. And we have a formula that works. You know, we do not take on listings of people do not take our advice because we just feel like it's going to be a house that's going to sit on the market. But it is a running joke right now that if you are under the power lines or on a busy street, now is the time to sell because everything is selling. Selling. Yeah, everything. So two things that one thing that my interpretation is, even though you feel your home is beautiful and it might be, it's still your personal preferences as opposed to what can actually market and sell. So be open to that. Exactly. Be open to letting us come in and reorganize your home because we've been doing this for a long time and we know what works. And we might, like in your case, you know, we didn't have to paint, but we might have said put in new carpeting here or in this area or do that. Um, And those are things that will, you know, help you sell at a maximum. So when we do list your house, you probably have the first weekend, depending on the price point, about 30 to 40 people in. And then usually about anywhere from 12 to 15 offers that you're dealing with. So a lot of sellers are having a lot of advantages, getting their appraisals removed, getting free rent backs. I mean, they're getting the world. Buying, on the other hand, you're one of 11 going in. And so you really have to stand out. And some of our buyers are going in 100 grand over a list just to get noticed. Mm -hmm. Just to get noticed. Mm. Um, See, that's the thing, though. You have... So half of the equation, if I'm a seller, yes, easy time to sell. But as soon as I sell, Where'd what's my plan? Well, that's so now the I'm problem. a buyer. Yes. Where do you go? Where do you go? Where are you going? What are you going to do? And renting isn't any easier today. No. Matter of fact, it's probably harder. It is harder. In fact, you know, we have been very successful in negotiating rent backs, sometimes maybe two, three months um, rent backs for free. Yep. If you uh, let your buyer who's coming in, you know, if you or if the buyer is coming in and, and wants to negotiate, then on our end, we'll negotiate a free rent back. So you can live in your house up to two, three months without paying rent or the buyer's PITIA, Principal Interest Taxes Insurance and Association. You know, that sometimes comes into play, but... It's tough and it's scary for our sellers, but our sellers are seeing dollar signs and they want to cash out. Well, and it is a historic time for people to sell and buy just in the sense that the interest rates are so low. Um, I think people are really taking advantage of that right now. Um, The tricky thing is just there's been, we're at an all-time inventory low. So, I mean, there's, you know, it's kind of a running joke. You have to like sell your um, dog and your boat to be able to like get the house. <laughs> That's incredible. There's yeah, it's 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 a little bit scary. Yesterday in Talega, there were three homes on the market, and in Ladera, mm-hmm. I think right now there's about fourteen. And so your marketplace, it's produ- I mean, it is focused in South Orange County. Yes, and Laguna Beach. Laguna we do Beach. A lot yeah. We've there. done Newport. You know, some we've San Juan. Some San Juan, San Juan and yeah. Dover Shores. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Kind of all over. So <clears throat> if I'm a buyer and I come to you, what are the st- what's my game plan? What's my strategy? What do I need to be prepared for? Well, How do I get in? I mean, obviously, I, I engage with you and I say, we're looking for a home. What's my response? What's, uh, what, what do we do next? Well, my response is really there's no negotiation right now. 
what you have to do is be prepared to remove all of your contingencies within a shortened time frame. The normal time frame would be 17 days. We're looking at probably five or not having a contingency period at all. That will move you to the top of the list. House to be sold as is. Appraisal contingency out the window. Mm. Investigation contingency, if you want to do your own inspection, that's great. And you have time to do that, but no repair requests. And I wow. think this is from the price point, though, from like, you know, up to like probably 1.7. After 1.7, there's more, there's a little bit more negotiation room right. in those okay. prices. Mm-hmm. And we do a lot so of... So the market's more normalized, 1.7, 1.8 plus. Yeah. And, and again, let me just preface that. It, that those are items that we will express to our clients. Going if you it. want to be seen, these are the things that you have to do. And for many, many months, we've had clients that have tried to negotiate and continue to negotiate, and they have lost out on some beautiful multiple homes. homes. Yeah. Multiple, multiple homes. And that's fine with Carrie and I, because we're here to support you. Yeah. We're here to guide you. We are your counsel. We will tell you this is probably not the way to go, but but we are working for you. Yeah. However, if you want the house, this is what you're going to have to do, X, Y, and Z. Remove your appraisal contingency. Remove your investigation. Remove your loan if you can, if you're pre-approved and you're confident Go in if you have cash. Cash Put as is much king. as you can. Yeah. Because if the appraisal doesn't come back, then you can cover the difference. Right. So explain to me what's happening in the market where we determine, agent, owner, what the listing price will be and why prices are being bid up as opposed to me saying, no, 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 what, what, is, what are we seeing homes sell for? And let's list it fifty to a hundred thousand higher, and try to combat this bidding up. What am I missing? What Can we missing? explain why or well, why that continues to happen? So to me, just basic statement would be: if I list my home for one four, mm-hmm. and it ends up selling for one four five zero, my natural response is: we didn't list high enough. Mm-hmm. Well, here, so what's the? Here's the thing: because you can run into listing your house too high and people are savvy. They've been looking, they know this market. Like they're looking and they're looking and they're looking again because they're losing out on homes. So people are savvy. They know that your home is gonna be listed too high and you may not get a lot of looks. You may be sitting on the market and then you're only hurting yourself because now people think, oh, we can come in and negotiate. Right. So you wanna list at market and You'll always go. You'll over. always win. You'll get. Let multiple. the market bid it up. Yeah, yeah. Or go and ask. The market will bid it up because we we're seeing a lot of people coming. From no one's health. coming in and asking if you're at market. Everybody's coming in over. And we're seeing a lot of people you're coming win. from L.A., San Francisco, these metropolitan areas yeah. that are used to these, you know, one point seven million dollar condos, and they're like in Covenant Hills or Talega or Laguna Beach. I can get what I can get for one point seven, and so. That's really driving the price up. So specifically, though, the range and what we're talking about is in South County. It's one two to one seven. One, South County. I one, mean, it's like one like this, two to like three million. Okay. Okay. Interesting. In our particular yeah, yeah, yeah. scope. Right, right, right. Amazing. I mean, we just sold. Now, it. what about homes in Ladera? So, as an example, let's use Ladera or Talega, like the highest value homes. Like five million dollar home. Yeah, those are Covenant Hills. Yeah, custom homes. Yeah, are I mean, they, like they for, can't be moving. Yeah, they yeah. everything. Those are moving. Everything's moving. Everything's moving. And just for an example, we have you know custom homes that have gone in Covenant Hills um, that have gone into Lega, um, super fast in those price points that were listed at the right price. And we've had bidding wars in um, a couple of three million dollar listings we've had over the last six months in Laguna Beach. So um, people are looking at second homes from LA and just starting to think, I think people were just so confined to looking at their four walls that a lot of people are driven to just want something new and something right. different. And they're looking to their future a little bit more. Mm-hmm. This, um, the this thing, is what I like to call the COVID phenomenon. And it, yeah. what else is weird is that, you know, right before COVID, builders were bl- building these big 
open spaces, these ranch-style homes that everybody loved. Well, now people are wanting more secular spaces. People are wanting their own space. Privacy which is, mm-hmm. within really their home. really funny. Mm-hmm. Like a bedroom, you know, that they can go into rather than this big. Most well, they're ha- working. Most in, households in need two offices now. Most households want amenities. They want the yard. They want Eater the room, pool. Loft. Everything. Pool, yeah. A gym. Everything. So how do you do that with a, with an older home? I mean, you they're sell, just converting it. You sell and you move up. And that's been the phenomenon. Wow. Because moms and dads and kids being, you know, online with school and now the the workforce figuring out we don't need to be in an office. We can Zoom every single meeting. We just need our space. We need to be able to work. So moms and dads need offices. Kids need workspace, tech mm-hmm. space. And and when we had the shutdown, we had no beach. We had no pools. We had no parks. It was crazy. Mm-hmm. So everybody wants their own amenities. And during the shutdown, we had no travel. So people saved a lot of money on not traveling. Right. And they weren't extrava- extravagant. We were at home. Right. And now everybody has been able to make that decision. If this ever happens again, we need to be in a place where we can all live happily together. Right. And have more space. Yes, have more space and, and have the amenities. The amenities. Yeah. And it's just gone crazy. That's yeah. exactly why we're seeing what we're seeing right now. People want the space. So what are some of the challenges that you all face, the biggest challenges you face in your practice right now? Not enough time in the day, honestly. You, what do you do about that? How do you solve for time? Hire more people on our team to help <laughs> us. Yeah. That because is funny because I was going to say our biggest challenge was more you know, working with the client, the consumer, and my heart going out to the sellers that have nowhere to go you know, and trying to find some home for them and then the buyers you know that are trying to get in like that the challenge of the buyers and the sellers alone and so that's where my angst goes Mm -hmm. but that also parlays with time yeah because we are trying so hard to find properties off market to suit everybody and that's our time behind the computer, on the phones, networking with other agents. And my, my heart does go out. I mean, we talk to a lot of agents in the industry, and we all feel the same just saying we really would love it to get back to a time where so it's not just sellers hold all the cards. Sellers and buyers can be able to negotiate more because we love that. That's when we're at our best, mm-hmm. when we're negotiating, mm-hmm. and now there's just – not I mean there is negotiation but not really I mean the sellers hold this is what we want Mm -hmm. in most circumstances do we see any normalizing in the next six I mean what does the industry say I mean are they saying six months 12 months year year I mean I talking to a lot of lenders they think it might stable out a bit but I mean when COVID happened last year we had um, escrows and we still had to be at our escrows and, and um, our walkthroughs, and we still and yeah. then they they uh, deemed us not an ex- uh, uh, what was it uh, essential. essential business, mm-hmm. and um, we still had to work, you know. So I think that there is a frenzy going on. Mm-hmm. There's just as long as demand is low, there still will be a frenzy going on. And historically, the most inventory comes out February through June. Um, we'll still be busy after that, but that's historically when people will see the most inventory come out because it's summertime and, and there's none. Well, yeah, here and then here's my take, Scott. It's you know we're we're looking at interest rates that are so low right now. Money is so cheap. We're seeing loans of two million dollars because people can afford that mortgage payment and they'd rather not put their own cash down. There, we're seeing interest rates at a historic low. They haven't changed much. They've gone up. They've gone back down. They've right. gone up again. And until we see maybe interest rates going up to a significant degree, this market is going to continue in the same frenzy that it is. And then my perspective is once interest rates start to go up, people are going to freak out again 
and they're going to be like, oh, shoot, we're going to miss the boat. We got to get in now. So there's going to be a whole nother wave of frenzy. Right. It'd be so like it's going to take a few, fire sale few panic. years, a few years. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I think inventory coupled with interest rates, you hit the nail on the head. Mm-hmm. There are really what's driving this. And then how do you deal with competition? I mean, the real estate market is so competitive amongst other agents. How do you? We don't look at it that way. We don't. don't. In fact, we There's enough for everyone. Yeah. Well, we reach out to our fellow agents in our our specific communities, and we all try to work together. Because that's probably a very small world. It's a small world, and, and we do try to keep it tight because once something goes on the market, it's gone. So if we can continue to work off market with our network of agents, our clients will always be successful, whether buying, selling. However, I think the competitiveness that you're talking about is how do you continue to get business? And I think it's because of our formula that works. Carrie and I are now starting to be looked at as a major player in our industry. And I think that's because of the service that we offer. And it's because of the brand that we uphold. Yeah. And it's where it we didn't happen from. overnight. It was a 10 year. Yeah. It's well, we started with the whole staging. It was people that wanted to stay in their house and we couldn't offer a staging company to come in because they don't those companies do. don't want people using yes. their stuff and sitting on their couches. So we started in little inventory here and there, and then it just evolved from that. And so I think it's a huge. Oh, from COVID. No, oh, I, Carrie is talking about oh. years, years ago. You can't stage a home when people are living in it. Oh, I didn't know that. So They don't want you to use their stuff. You can't go through a professional stager. Usually it's a vacant home, people move out, and then you use a professional stager. They come in, install, and your home is set to go, set for pictures. But nobody's living there. Right. And we are in a market, in a couple of markets, where it's families, yeah. family-oriented. Right, right. So... We had to come up with an idea. There's no way we can take pictures of this house or show this house this way. We had to bring our, you know, our heads together. Your A game. Our, and we had to bring our A game. And put and, it in the and home. And <laughs> we had to convince. <laughs> exactly. We had to convince the sellers to let us stage their home. And we still to, do to this day. Oh, yeah, you did. I was resistant. Yeah. There's a lot. Glad of, we did. A lot of sellers <laughs> that are very, they love their personal things and, and it's a little bit offensive sometimes when we come in and say it needs to look like this. Right. But every single time we have proven success and have gotten the number that our sellers have wanted or above. Yeah, you just have over. to remember, although it is your home and you live there and you're you're emotionally attached to it, you're selling it and it now is a business transaction. Right. So how do we optimize the value of your home and sell it as quick as possible. Right. right. And that's, that's how, smart. That's how we optimize. <laughs> so how do you, uh, this is one thing, other than it being an app and a resource and access for information, you're seeing things like Redfin and Zillow and now they're selling properties. And how does that play into these types of markets and marketplace? I mean, they have selling agents or they do. listing you pay agents. For, you pay for what you get. Mm-hmm. Really, that's the bottom line. And so Red- what are they really providing other than that it's just an app? We work with a lot of Redfin agents, and they're wonderful and they're great. However, they are working for their company. We are working for our own company and our brand. And so we make sure that we give everything that we can to our clients where they can succeed. Well, and I also think, too, and the- um, our brokerage compass is known throughout the country, so we can work with anybody in any state from Hawaii to New York and really have pocket listings at the touch of our fingertips. Mm-hmm. Right. And that's really been great for us in this last year. And the that's on the Compass that app. Yeah, we have we have an app too. Yeah. So the Compass but like, app So is Redfin, wonderful. they can't do pocket lips listings, right? I mean, we can't do an off-market listing. I, can, I don't know where I can do that with you. Has, yes, if you use our Compass app, you will see pocket listings. They're called private exclusives. Mm-hmm. Interesting. That's a very bougie <laughs> adjective. I like that. Compass is very bougie. Yeah, yeah that's nice. <laughs> However, um, we also, we are able to offer a lot. It's it's what you put into your business is what you're going to get out of yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, so you two have full control over your brand. Right. 
and what your product looks like and the relationship or the experience that your customers, both buyers and sellers experience, where I, I would think that somebody on a red, and this is just my ignorance, so walk, talking through this, but like a Redfin, it's, this is what you conform to. Exactly. Right. right. And there's not a lot of independent autonomy. We just worked. I think you hit the nail on the head. Yeah. Yeah, We just worked with a great agent and closed a sale yesterday with Redfin and he was delightful to work with. Um, He has a lot of business himself. And I think that's because he carries himself well and is able to give what he can to his business. I think it's just individual and what you put in. Is yeah. what you're going to get out. Well, there's also just look, hey, it's a relationship business. You to your customers, both again the buyers and sellers, and not everybody's going to resonate with everyone. Also, there's per- people that I think are more price sensitive and more maybe transact and or transaction oriented versus. No, no, no. We really want an experience here. We want to create this different look and feel on a different product that's on the marketplace. So it's finding the right person. Right. For sure. And, you know, sometimes if people take us on on an interview or they want to know our process and they're not necessarily on board with us coming in and reorganizing and staging um, and they want to list too high or too low and they're dead set on what they want, sometimes we won't take a listing. Right. Yeah. We know our formula. We know that our formula works, and we know how to get our clients the best price, highest and best price in the least amount of time. And if they don't believe in us, it's not worth us to be away from our kids, our family, right. and all that. We've learned that the yeah. hard way over the years. That it's just, it's fun. We love our job. We take so much pride in it. We enjoy what we do. We're good at what we do, and we have some of the best clients in the world, Mm -hmm. I think, literally. It makes our job enjoyable. Getting that call at 8 o'clock, I want to answer it. Right. When it's Melissa, what's up, girl? Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. But at the end of the day, we are moms too. So we have to pick and choose choose what we're going to do. We have to choose our battles because we have little kids at home still. Mm -hmm. They're little. They still need their moms. So what does the future look like for your partnership in three years from now? We're sitting here right now, and we say, <laughs> this was our vision of success. You know what? I honestly, Carrie and I have talked a lot about going into flipping homes, and the timing right now is not perfect yeah. to flip. But oh, Because I would imagine the demand of time would be so exponentially greater to be able to, to <laughs> afford yourself to do that. We right. just, Ro- am I, yeah. and this, Again, this is just... We just feel I like maybe when the market crashes, it would be a good time to maybe yeah. pick up a property or two. I don't two. think it's going to crash. But, but if it ever yeah. goes low, yeah. really yeah. low, and we can pick something up, it might... Just to start Every market that. is cyclical. Exactly. At some point, we will have a trough. Yep. We will. Who knows what the trough's going to look like? But we've talked about that. And that's the time that. you're going to pounce. Yeah, that's our next so. phase. Okay. So. We're going to call that business style and grace. We are. Okay. <laughs> what do you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. I know why. <laughs> Sorry. A little no, late we're going to gonna just. I think that would be so fun. And, you know. And five years from now, who knows where we're going to be? I always used to say, I can't wait to get to my 15-year mark in real estate because this is it, and it's crazy. And I always knew it would be. But once we get into high school, our paths are going to cross so much more with our kids and our crossover and our friends, our kids, you know, being in high school, I think. Because they're similar ages, right? I mean, you're Mm -hmm. on the same trajectory Exactly. Yeah, minor. Yeah. One of the unions that brought you together. Yep. This, yeah. This, yeah. Elder Yurt's page. I'm 12 and 8. 8, 9, and 11. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's so. no grass growing under your feet. <laughs> no. That's no. true. Isn't it crazy? But we love what we're we do. We're sprinting. Yes. <laughs> and we're so humbled by the people that call yeah. us every day. And we feel extremely blessed. Extremely we blessed. Are. Well, I am gracious to you both in more than one way. So thankful, oh. thankful to you. Uh, how do individuals reach out to you? How do they get a hold of? Call us. They call us. They text us. Page. Get on no, our social so media. So website. Okay. Yeah, oh, website. Oh, right. Uh, we um, have social media. Instagram. McDaniel Gilmore Group RE on our Instagram is really the best way to keep in touch with us. But um, 
That's amazing to me. Yeah. So mess direct message you. Really? Oh yeah, okay. that's the best way. So that's where life has gone, Scott. Are Everything you more is likely on Instagram and Facebook now. <laughs> it's know, like I'm your business card. Kind of, it's it's your business card. In fact, in COVID, we weren't even allowed to pass out business cards. That's all we had. And that's been our oh biggest platform, Instagram and Facebook. We used to spend a lot of money on marketing, paper marketing, and it's Print. all gone away. Who helps you with that now? That would be AC Social Designs. <laughs> Woo-woo, Annie girl. Shout Thank out to Annie. Annie, <laughs> Annie Cooper. Cheers. <laughs> you no, know, AC Social Designs. She's has here. Really, she's laughing. Yeah, she's, she's taping us right now, but yeah. she has really done a great job for us. And people are noticing. You know, we not only post, I think what is really important, we've been posting on our own personal pages because that's our sphere of influence. But Annie will take those posts and she'll put them on our professional business. And we were in page. a meeting the other day um, at our Compass headquarters across the street from um, Salt Creek on um, PCH. Mm-hmm. And our marketing department said, Who is doing your um, Instagram and Facebook? Because it looks amazing. Amazing. They're like, Do you need help? We're like, Nope, we're good. Nope. We have AC social designs. Yeah. So do you think that you need anything else? Uh, uh, other forms of marketing? Word of mouth, obviously, is a natural uh, network that you've developed for the last decade, Exactly. Right? That's where we get most of our business. But also like passive marketing or you know indirect marketing. Do you think you need anything other than We do a lot of today? dinners and cocktails and fun times, too, with our clients, which we enjoy. Mm-hmm. But What we, does that look like? How do you do that? At like individual why do you dinner? Come? Or you mean like group meetings? Yeah, <laughs> um, hell, sometimes yeah. individual and sometimes group meetings. It's funny. Things. I, we've... Yeah. we've I mean, I've been we a customer. Just, like, I haven't been invited to anything. Oh, my gosh. Okay, Bella next Kalina. Tuesday. Yeah. yeah. We're Taco setting Tuesday. it up. Let's do it. Annie, you're invited, too. So tell me about what what happens at these. Have you ever been to Bella Clean? It's so much fun. No. So we usually will have some. It's a chill surfer vibe in San Clemente, and we have Taco Tuesday club. there, and we'll yeah. just have people over and host them to some tacos and cocktails. Um, a lot of times we'll say... Hey girl, let's go have a cocktail at the Ritz and whatever. It's individ. That's individual. That's individual. But, but and we'll we do both. We host dinners at yeah. Bella Clina, and you know it's usually Taco Tuesday. And how now long have you summer, been doing that? A from the beginning. Years. Yeah, I feel really? Like from the beginning, years. I feel yeah. like we've been. That's been a. So like now, it's like this. We used to just, actually have parties in some of our, not parties, but we would have launch parties in some of our pre-COVID in some of our beautiful custom home listings and that was really great you see that on million dollar listing where Mm -hmm. they'll have a big soiree event we used to do that all the time but covid's really limited us so we hope we can get back to that place yeah that would be great yeah because what a great way to showcase your brand the person's home you know what we could do yeah we could bring in we could bring in your bourbon guy Oh, yeah. And we could bring him to Bella Clina. We could do a bourbon tasting. And then, you know, the next week we could do a tequila tasting. That'd be fantastic. This would be fun. Yeah, sign me up for that. You're in. Let's do it. I'll yeah. attend. Yeah. Well, cheers. <laughs> cheers. Cheers Thank to you that. All. All Thanks, right. Scott, for hey, having till us. Till next time. Yeah. Yes, till next time. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely.